Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Put this video together to hopefully show you how your DC or direct current electrical works on a boat. I'm trying to do this as simple and straightforward as possible. There's great videos out there with fuse panels. I'm sure we'll do one at some point, but I just want to show you how power is transferred through the wires of your boat and switches from your battery to accessories. My battery's up here. I've got a positive and a negative. I put a red is positive because a lot of your power wires are red and a black negative because a lot of your ground wires should be black. Ground wires are typically always going to be black. Sadly, our positives or powers can be different colors, but just remember, black's going to be your ground. For practical purposes, I'm going to run a power wire to a switch. So my switch in the off position, the power just ends here. My ground, some switches, my ground may come to the switch and then it might jump out from there. In other cases, the ground might be shared among a bunch of accessories and eventually it just has to get to the accessory that I want. So we're gonna pretend in this case that our ground is wired to the switch, but essentially it's just a spot for a connection and then it can go out to the accessory. When I flip my switch to the on position, the wire that's connected from my switch, and maybe there is no wire, you're putting one in, maybe there's already a wire that's a positive with a ground that you can run out or add to. We'll show you that in the switch panel in a minute here, and that can run to an accessory. But when I flip my switch on, power is gonna run out, and I've connected to the positive of my accessory. In this case, could be your stereo a red or yellow power wire with a black ground. It could be a courtesy light underneath your helm or underneath the seats. It could be LEDs on the outside of the boat, inside of the boat, it could be navigation lights, docking lights. Maybe you're a bow fisherman and you have a whole bunch of lights out in the front of your boat. We still gotta get them a positive power and a ground. So here's the neat thing. When I get my positive and my ground to that accessory, it's on. So in this case, let's call this a courtesy light. So we'll call it a C light. From there, maybe I want multiple courtesy lights. Maybe I want one over here. Maybe I want one over here. Maybe I want one here. In order to power these, all I need to do is take my positive and my ground and extend them out. I could do them in a string or I could extend them all from one place. So each of my courtesy light, typically you open a package up and you've got a black and a red wire sticking out or a black with a different color. All I need to do is supply a positive and a ground to each of these. And that might look different. I might run my positive and my ground. I might split it out three ways from there, and then I might take my ground and run that out. And then I can get power to all of those. Our big thing to keep in mind here is that I want my wiring to be heavier gauge or thicker wire closer to the battery. And as I get out, especially if I'm gonna split it a bunch of ways, I wanna keep that flow of energy. I don't wanna restrict it. So I'm gonna keep it fairly heavy gauge. So maybe 16 gauge for LED type accessories, like these courtesy lights. But I'm as it gets to the end, once I get here, I might run a lighter gauge out to the accessories. But in this case, it's not gonna to hurt to run a little heavier gauge. Hopefully this makes some sense in terms of just needing to have a positive from the battery or a switch to your accessory as well as a ground. And then from there we can share all of those accessories. I just wrapped up recently some underseat LEDs in a boat. So if this is my boat, for my front seats, I wanted LEDs underneath the seats, underneath the tow kicks. So what I did is I ran wire, my switch panel, panel or my helm is here. I ran wire from there, it was a two strand, a red and a black. So I ran a black wire, it's my ground wire. 
up underneath this seat and I also ran a power wire. Those came into a connection with my LEDs right here. So I have power and ground to that LED, but I have an LED strip on this side too that I need to get power to. It's as simple as taking another strand of wire, another 16 gauge, or I could do 18 gauge, and splicing it in at that same connection and running it underneath the boat across for my ground and across for my power, splicing them into the LED lights on that side too. That's as simple as it is, and then hooking this into a switch or a power source at the dash. So our battery is back here. I'm gonna have a big heavy wire that comes into the switch panel. Big heavy wire that comes into the switch panel for ground. And that's usually 12 gauge, maybe 10 gauge. And that's gonna give power to the switch panel so that I can take this power wire and distribute it to these LEDs I can distribute it to my navigation lights. I can distribute it to docking lights, to my stern light, to my stereo system. The ground is the same ground. Essentially, it's getting shared to those LEDs, navigation, docking, stereo, all of those lights all come back to sharing this same positive and ground. And as long as you remember that, that switch panel is not so scary and running additional accessories off of switch panels and switches themselves aren't so bad. Power our switch, ground our switch, we can power and ground our accessories. This is also another reason why pontoon stuff harness is oh my goodness. a game changer because you don't have to make your own wiring harness. I've made my own wiring harness. I did it in my little fishing boat. And for a $130 harness from pontoon stuff to plug and play and already have a bunch of wires run out. They might not have the LED wires run out. Not saying you couldn't use some of the wiring that's in there, but it makes life so easy when it comes to wiring in a boat to run that harness and then just splice in your accessories because the thinking has already been done for you. All you got to remember is to give those accessories a positive in the ground. Here's the practical part. I think that folks get a look at a switch panel. This is a pre-wired one from pontoon stuff and they get scared. Maybe it's not even this complex. This has a charger and a voltmeter. Ignore those for now. What I want to show you is that we have a, this would plug into the main harness that's going to go back to your battery. And there's a big red and a big black wire. Those essentially picture those just coming straight from the battery. There's a fuse at the battery. It's resettable. That's fine. But these big power wires, power and ground, come in. So this big red power wire comes in to a fuse and then it transfers power from the fuse to a switch. So this red wire right here is supplying power to this switch. There's a ground tied in up top here because in order to make power, we have to have power in the red and a ground from the ground of the battery or the negative on the battery. The switch, the way that this works is when I turn this switch on, it takes the power that's coming in from right here and it's gonna send it right out this orange and brown wire to an accessory. The main thing that you need to know is that accessory needs to somehow share that ground. So in this case, the harness is made for us. There's a ground combined with each power so that we can power accessories doesn't matter necessarily where exactly the ground comes in. It could even go straight to the battery. Don't worry about that. The main thing is we need a power and a ground and their switch. The way we break this down is it's really just a power coming in, a ground, and then our output for the power to go. Again, I turn the switch on. It takes the power from this wire and sends it right out this wire as long as there's a ground connected, our accessories are gonna work. I hope that makes sense. I just wanna simplify this for you a little bit. The reason it looks so complicated is because we have that main power coming in and it's getting shared across all of these fuses which are jumped to the switches. That's the only reason it looks so crazy. And you have switches like a navigation which has a two-way switch. 
So that has a couple more things coming out where power can go out to those accessories. That's your switch panel. But when we break it down to the simplest form, it's getting for direct current, it's getting our positive. So this is my positive on my battery and my ground or my negative on my battery. And it's getting those out to our accessories. So whether we have a switch from a positive and negative, whether we have a switch somewhere, the switch's job is just to interrupt the power going out. Whenever you see a switch, its job is to be a break in between. And when I want power, I flip the switch on and it lets power flow out to the accessory. The ground's always gonna be connected. It always can be, it's not gonna hurt. So for an example here, I've got some LEDs and we can picture this. This is my port side of the boat. This is my starboard side of the boat. And what I wanna do is get power to both of these LEDs, just like I did in the boat right behind you over there. I wanna run one strand of wire from my switch panel. And in this switch panel, I actually even have an accessory wire coming out, an orange and a black. Orange is power, black is ground. So if I wanna continue a run of wire off of that, a red and a black, two in one, that's what we call this, I can run it straight out of there to an accessory to a corresponding red and black. Sometimes it's not red and black, but if it's solid black, that's always ground. So just keep that in mind. I don't know why the industry doesn't just have one set color for power and ground, but we're not gonna go into that. So if I run my power, and I'm not using butt splice on this, all I'm gonna do today is twist these together. But if I run my power, so this is my power from my battery or from my switch panel, this is my ground, if I run those out, I'm going to go ahead and power this right up. With that lead run, this would be one of my front seats, I want to jump power over to this one without having to go to a different switch or a different main power run. The way I'm going to do that is if I had heat treat butt splices or a butt splice of any sort, I would just tie in to this connection with my positive and my ground, so with my red and my black. Sorry, this is so bright. So I tied in an extra two-stranded wire of a ground and a positive, and I can run this right across the boat, right underneath. I can splice in, I'm just twisting them. Please don't just twist them. Use butt splices and heat shrink for that. And when I connect them, I'm going to get power to both LEDs. So what I essentially did here is I ran from my switch panel or an accessory wire. I ran it out. I had to get power to one LED. So I connected a power and a ground there. And then I spliced in a jumper wire to run power across to the other side LED. With LEDs like this, I could run a lot of them all off of jumper wires, as long as the, the main thing is keeping our outgoing wire, typically something like this is 16 gauge. I wanna keep that 16 gauge until I get closer to my end uh, units or my end accessories. Those can go down to 18 gauge. This jumper could be 18 gauge, it would be just fine. So I hope that helps just to show you how we can share the same power run as long as we're connecting those powers and those grounds, we can, we can make that power jump across. It just continues through. That's the beauty of DC. It continues through all of those accessories to make them all run off of that same switch or that same one strand of power. Comment with questions. I'm trying to do this as simple and straightforward as possible so you can get a little better understanding of how these accessories are gonna work because this could be an LED light, could be docking lights, navigation lights, horn. They're gonna have a power and a ground. Sometimes we can share them, totally fine.